So uh, last night there was a debate, you might have heard about it, and the dominating subject during the debate was climate. And it, you know, it should be, it's a big issue. What are we going to do with the industry going forward? And I won't get into that. There wasn't a question though on agriculture. There wasn't enough time, I guess. And so uh, that's a bit unfortunate because, ladies and gentlemen, today in Saskatchewan, about one out of every four jobs is directly or indirectly tied to agriculture. We talk a lot about oil, and we talk a lot about the other resources we have in potash, but one in every four jobs is directly or indirectly tied to agriculture, including, of course, the 200 plus South Country and 40 to 50, I think, that will be in this facility alone. Just like the staff and management here at South Country are committed to supporting producers, we've tried to do that as well in government over the last four years. Under the leadership of our agriculture minister, Bob Banrod, and I'm a little biased, I think Bob's about the best agriculture uh, minister in the country. But under his leadership, our government has produced, has presented in its last three egg budgets among the highest, the largest investments of agriculture in the province's history. Part of it's due to the fact that there have been some tough times and some emergencies in certain areas of the province. When farmers and ranchers were hit by flooding in the last two years, in the Northeast and now in the Southeast, we responded. We acknowledge and thank the national government. We have a good relationship with the federal government, and I'm glad we do, because when we need to put together a program to add a little support over and above what exists uh, in the federal provincial suite of programs, they've been willing to sit down and have that discussion and then take action. And so our government has been able to invest, with the support of the federal government, $600 million in disaster funding, making it available to producers who are affected by excess moisture in 210 and 211 and to mitigate hardships in the livestock industry. We've provided $71 million worth of direct support to 18,000 cattle and hog producers. We have kept the promises that we made in the last election to producers, to the agriculture sector. Risk management programming like AgriStability and AgriInvest have been fully funded up front in every budget. We have not had to worry whether or not there would be resources in those budgets, in those programs from a provincial perspective They've been funded up front. That was not always the case. Moreover, under Bob Banrod's leadership, we've taken the management, the administration of those programs from Manitoba, and we moved them to Melbourne, uh, where we have a decidedly Saskatchewan bend to the people working there and the response that producers are getting if they have to call in on the agri stability and the agri invest programs. We've kept our promise to conduct an extensive review of crop insurance. Uh, we've made major, I think, improvements to the program again under Bob's leadership, and because we were listening to many of you. Coverage is 95% higher than the average coverage offered to producers under the previous administration. In 2007, a record high $161 million was provided in this year's budget, and coverage levels reached a record high $173 an acre in 2011. The unseated acreage benefit pretty important this year increased from $50 to $70, and we approved the Livestock Predation Program to compensate producers for livestock killed or injured by predators. In addition to crop insurance enhancements, we've also increased the wildlife damage compensation program from 80 to 100% compensation. And finally, and maybe most important, after years and years uh, of talking about education property tax on farmland, action was taken. And the education tax burden on farmland, because of the action we've taken, has decreased on average 80% over the last four years. And ladies and gentlemen, in the context of this election, it's important to remember that we've been able to do these things, and obviously we acknowledge the good fortune that our government and our province is having, but we've been able to do all of these things within balanced budgets. And while paying off $3 billion of the debt of this province, and I'm not going to get too political today, but I, I can't think of a more important issue in this campaign than fiscal responsibility, than the need for this province to pay the bills as they come in, for us to balance the budget and continue to, to pay down the debt. We are going to work hard if we're fortunate enough to be re-elected to be there for rural Saskatchewan in the future, to be there for producers. The agriculture sector itself is just so important, more on that in a moment, but think about the fact that there are no pump jacks on Albert Street, there are no potash mines on College Avenue. Those resources that we prize, that we talk about, they're in rural Saskatchewan, and so we've got to make sure that we're investing in that infrastructure, that we're supporting those communities. And we'll work hard to do that if we're given the, the honour to form uh, another government. 
This is an exciting time for agriculture in our province and around the world. And I just want to conclude with something we're actually going to more formally announce uh, later, uh, later in the campaign. You know these stats, you live them every day, you're responsible for them, but they bear repeating. We've got some guests here. Saskatchewan accounts for 67% of the world exports in lentil. lentils. Lentils. 67% of the world exports in lentils come not just from Canada, they come from 18,000 farmers in the great province of Saskatchewan. Over 55% of the dried peat exports in the world. The world exports of that commodity come from you, come from the province of Saskatchewan. 25% of the mustard seed exports, 40% of the world flax seed, 33% of the world's durum, and 18% of the world's canola exports. When I get to travel outside this province and promote Saskatchewan, I love reading this list. And you should see the look on faces, whether I'm in China or India or Bangladesh or the United States, when I go down this list, it, there's, it's, there's surprise that this one place in Canada that's, you know, hard to spell but easy to draw, that they may not have heard of before, has all of this to offer a world that wants two things today, food security and energy security. That's what the world, that's what the fastest growing economies of the world want. In that world, whoever the government is, I like our chances in the province of Saskatchewan. I like our chances for the future. But it's why we must also focus on agriculture and focus on the huge opportunity that all of this presents. Later in the campaign, we'll talk about some preliminary funding we want to make available for a food security institute that should be right here in the province. It should be located here. We should be renewing our investment in crop science and in technology. We should be working with those fast econ growing economies of the world that are all hungry to increase their sustainability while we increase trade with them. It'll be part of our vision moving forward if we get a chance to form a government in a world that wants food security. I like our chances. I like what's in store for the future of this province. I think it's important to uh, close the way I begin, and that's with just a, a thank you. Thanks to all of you for what you do every day. Thanks to the, the team, the employees that are here. You're kind of easy to spot. Uh, we are obviously very much appreciated by management and by the partners. And again, to those who risk and build facilities like this and employ us and help build this new Saskatchewan, thanks very much. Have a great day.